So we want to be able to visualize what's going on when we solve these kinds of quadratic equations. So practically, graphing, picture-wise, what are we looking at? To find the x-intercepts of a linear equation, what happens? So as I look at the graph, or the axes, if I'm moving just along the x-axis, if I'm trying to figure out the x-intercepts here, maybe they're crossing at these two points, what are my y values in that case? y is always 0 for any of the points along that axis when I'm trying to find the x-intercepts. So, to find the x-intercepts of a linear equation, we replace y with 0, because y is 0, and we solve for x. This procedure can also be used to find the x-intercepts of a quadratic equation. It's what we've been doing. If we set our equation equal to 0, if we make y be 0, then it's what we've just been dealing with. It's what we've seen. And three different cases can arise as we look at these kinds of problems. The first one that you see, we don't have any x-intercepts. Those are imaginary roots. So if we solve our equation for x when y is 0, and we have imaginary numbers involved. When we graph it, that's what it's going to look like. If we have only one intercept, that point of the graph is touching the axis, the um, x-axis, two times. So that would be a case where we have a perfect square trinomial. It's touching two times right there. Or the last two, we can have two separate x-intercepts. So if we find two real values, we will graph and it will look like that. So we want to find the x-intercepts of this graph, of this quadratic, and we have a picture of it below. So we can just look on the x-axis, if there are labels, and see where those points are happening at. But in this case, do we have any labels? Do I know what points those are occurring at? No, but we have a good idea that one of them is positive and pretty big, and one is negative and pretty small. And how do we solve for those if our picture doesn't have those labels for where the points are actually at? So again, to go for the x-intercepts, we let y be equal to 0. So if I set it equal to 0, it's all of those cases that we've just been solving. How do we solve for x? Okay, we got a factor. We've got a 1 on on the front, and 5 is prime. So we need to figure out what combo will give us negative 5 when we multiply and negative 4 when we add. Positive 1, negative 5. So what does that tell me for my x values? The first chunk is equal to 0. That implies x is negative 1. If the second chunk is equal to 0, that implies x is 5. So as we look back to that picture, now that we have an idea, does it look like our left-hand x-intercept could be happening at negative 1? Yeah, negative and pretty small, like we said. And the second one, on the right, positive and a little bit bigger, positive 5. So yes, our solution set to this equation is 5, negative 1, but to actually report the x-intercepts, they happen at points. So where are those x-intercepts occurring at? What point? So my first x value, negative 1, what was my y value? 0. It's moving along that axis. And the other one happens at 5, 0. Okay. And on your example, you have the quadratic equation, y equals 3x minus x squared. And you actually have a grid in this case. So we don't have to solve the equation, setting it equal to zero. We can just look where are the points intersecting at. What are the values that make it true? So my first x-intercept, I'm going to look at the left-hand one. Where is it going through? Going through the origin, through zero, zero. And my other intercept, again, the y value is always zero because we're moving along the x-axis. Where is that happening at? 
three. So visually we can see. But if they aren't lying right on where some grid points are intersecting, how can we solve that for the intercepts? And we might as well. I need to set y equal to 0 and solve. So if I get 0 is 3x minus x squared. I've got a binomial, so my first question, is it a difference of squares? No. So we need to look. Common between them, what can we factor out of both? An x, and we'll be left with 3 minus x. So what does that mean for our values that make it true? First chunk is equal to zero. Figured out the first one. And the second one, if that chunk is equal to zero, x is equal to three. So visually, if we've got grids and they're nice, we can um, tell where those x-intercepts are happening or just get a good idea if we don't have any grids. And we can always solve algebraically. And if you think you're wrong, how can you check? Plug in those values into the original. Make sure that we actually get zero out. Make sure that we make these satisfied.